Hi guys, it's Matt here from MW Driver Training. Uh, today we're going to talk about the show me tell me questions that you'll get in your driving test. How important are they? What are they? And how much do you need to know? So your show me tell me questions, they form a really small part of your driving test and um, they are still very important, although they only form a, take a small part of your test time. So they're split into two types of questions. You've got 14 tell me questions, which a driving examiner will, will ask you whilst you're stationary. And then you've got seven show me questions, which you'll be asked to do on the move. So the examiner is going to ask you to show them a controller, show that you can know how to control the car whilst you're carrying out and uh, washing the windscreen or putting on your demister so that they know that you can control the car safely whilst you're not just driving along whilst you've got other things to concentrate on. So why is it important? Why is it important that we do these? Why do they, why do they want them there? Why do they, are they part of your test? And why is it important for you to know your answers and know what you're gonna say and be confident with them? So for me, it's two reasons. The first reason, obviously you're gaining knowledge about basic car maintenance on some of the stuff. And the other things are um, making sure that your car is safe to use as well. So maintenance and safety of your car, really, really important. You don't wanna be driving around a car that's unsafe. Um, because that could lead to an accident. So then after that, the other thing for me is your tell me question is usually done at the beginning of the test or towards the beginning of the test, certainly. Um, so very often before you even leave the test center car park, before you've even turned the car on, you'll generally be asked these tell me questions, one of these tell me questions. So if you can be confident and say, yeah, I know the answer to that and give the really good succinct answer to the question you've been asked, then that's gonna set a good example and the examiner's probably going to be thinking they're taking this seriously so so they can go oh, okay i know that this person hopefully is has prepared well for their test so a couple of common questions that people have with the show me tell me questions and part of the test are one can i fail my test on it and two do i have to give the exact answer exactly as it's written by the dbsa so to answer the first question will i fail my test on it you generally won't fail your test and it's very hard to fail your test on the tell me questions it's a test of knowledge so on the tell me questions in summary really 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 hard to fail on it if you get it wrong you you pick up a driver fault um, but not the end of the world on the show me questions if you were asked to put on the rear demister and you look away from the road and you look down like this down at the control and then whilst you're doing that you find it you press it but in the meantime, your car's drifted to the right and in towards oncoming traffic or drifted towards the curb um, and you end up on the wrong side of the road or the examiner has to take some sort of action or something dangerous happens, you're gonna get a, a serious fault for losing control of the car. If you do the wrong control, on the other hand, or you don't do the control properly, you're unlikely to fail. Again, another driver fault. And you have to remember in your driving test, you can get up to 15 driver faults um, so you wouldn't fail for it straight away it could contribute if you've got more lots and lots of other driver faults but if you just get it wrong on its own is not usually enough for you to fail your test so to answer the other question that we had earlier about would i have to give the exact answer exactly as they've written it in the questions the answer in short is no you need to give the correct content but you can word it however you want learn the information, learn what the answer would be, and then give it in the way that you, you feel comfortable. So the first question that you could get asked would be, can you tell me how you check that the brakes are working properly before starting out on a journey? So the answer, when you put your foot on the brake pedal whilst the car is running, so before you've moved the car, but you've got the car on, you put your foot on the brake pedal, the pedal should feel firm. Once you get the pedal all the way down, it shouldn't continue to keep moving. It should feel nice and firm and not spongy or slack. If your pedal goes all the way to the floor, you've got a big problem. You don't want to move your car. You turn your car off and stop and get yourself a mechanic out to you because your brakes aren't going to work. You, by that point, will have been driving your car for a while. You know what feels normal. So if it doesn't feel as firm and as responsive as normal, if it feels like it keeps moving or it feels really bouncy or feels different in any way, you want to get that checked out. The second way of checking is you get the car moving and then you gently apply the brakes and the, the car should just brake in a straight line. If it pulls over to the left or to the right, then again, you've got a problem on one of your brakes and one side of your brakes isn't working correctly. So you'd need to get that checked out as well. So the next question that you could get asked 
Can you tell me where you'd find the recommended tire pressures for this car and how would you check them? So recommended tire pressures are in one of two places. The answer that they're generally looking for is always going to be there is in the vehicle handbook. But a lot of modern cars have a sticker on either the driver's side door. When you open the door, you'll be able to see it. And I'll show you a picture of one of those in a moment. Um, and in the vehicle handbook. So you go to the handbook, look at your wheel, find the right size tire and wheel that you've got, and then check what the pressure is. And it's either going to be in PSI, which is pounds per square inch, or in bar, which is another way of measuring pressure. So that's where you'd find them. And then how would you check them? You'd either check it with a tire pressure gauge, you get one of those from Halfords or online on Amazon or somewhere, or you could take it to a car garage or a petrol station. A lot of petrol stations have a, a tire, a, um, an air pump, and that will display the reading of the um, of the pressure in your wheels and in your tires. The third question you could get asked is, how would you check that your head restraint is correctly adjusted uh, to prevent um, injury in, a, in the event of a crash? So. Hopefully you can see the head restraint behind me here. It's quite low at the moment for me. So the way that we're going to check that, the way you know it's in the right place, the centre part of the head restraint should be level with your eyes or the top of your ears. So for me, generally, it's going to be most of the way up. So if I sit back and I can see that that's almost maybe, in, yeah, maybe that looks about right for me, feels about right. It's really hard to see the side of your own face. It's really hard to see. You don't have eyes on the side of your head, but for me at the minute I can just about see the side of me, um, the side of my face and the side of my head in the rear view mirror, the way I've got it adjusted here. So I can see that that's about in the right place for me. So question four, will be, tell me how you check the tyres to ensure they have sufficient tread depth and that their general condition is good and safe. Tread depth, you want to have 1.6 millimetres all the way around the centre three quarters of the tyre. So you ignore the edges almost because the edges round off. There's not any grip there, not a lot of grip there anyway. And then through the center three quarters, you want 1.6 millimeters of, of wear. Now there are indicators on your tires, little ridges. You'll notice them in the middle. And again, I'll show you a picture of those um, in a moment. The problem with relying on those is as your tire wears down, if you wear down past that, they will start to wear at the same rate. So you'll look at it and think, oh, I've not worn down. They're just, it's just level or I've, well, yeah, they might be level, but you could have less tread depth because you've already worn past the top of it. So be really careful. The best way to check it is with a tread depth gauge, again, from Halfords or whatever. You'll put it in the tread depth gauge into the tread and it will tell you how much you've got left. You can use the outside of a 20p coin. There's a little ridge on the 20p coin. I'll show you that as well. And that's 1.6 millimeters. So if you put that in the tread and the edge of the the edge of the coin disappears into the tread then you know you've got more if it sticks out proud then you've not got you've got less and you've not got enough so the general condition of the tires for them to be in good general condition um you want no cuts or splits no bulges in them could show weak spot weak points um, and which could lead to your tire bursting or failing on you um, and you don't want that to happen especially at high speed you may need to turn your tires at the front turn your wheels so they're pointing one way or the other so your tires are showing out the side of the car the back ones you'll have to get yourself in and have a look because obviously you can't turn the back wheels out the next question that they'd ask you it could ask you um is how would you check that your head and tail lights are working correctly so for this one you may need to turn the ignition on not the car you may need the engine on but you may need the ignition on um, and to do this you would turn your headlights on to dipped headlights um, and then you would be able to have to get out of the car if you're on your own and walk around and check Make sure all the lights are illuminated that should be illuminated. Even easier, if you've got somebody with you, you can ask somebody to just nip out and nip and walk around and then they'll tell you, yeah, yeah, they're, they're on, they're all good. Or, oh no, you've got a light out here. So you know what's going on and then you need to go and get that fixed if there's one, one out. Um, but if not, then we're all good. You're all good to go and off you go. Number six is a nice quick one. How would you know you've got a problem with your ABS system? So first of all, ABS, anti-lock braking system. The system that helps prevent you from skidding when you're braking heavily. It's a, something to do with your brakes. You don't want to have a problem with your brakes while you're driving. And the answer to that one is on your dashboard, you'll get an orange light that comes up, um, which will say problem with the ABS. Okay, so question seven. Uh, how do you check your direction indicators are working? Again, nice, easy, quick one, this. Uh, the easiest and most simple way to do this, put your hazard lights on. The second step to that, the important part, is to get out and check that they're all illuminating as they should be. Uh, again, so number eight, another nice fairly straightforward one again most none of these are hugely complicated but this these are some of the easier ones so how would you check that your brake lights are working so we've been asked to 
check how would we check our brakes are working safely now it's about how our brake lights which let everybody else know that we're braking how they if they're working properly you may need your ignition on don't have to have the engine running necessarily but the ignition would need to be on so you get the lights to work and you press the brake pedal now from the car seat you're not going to be able from the driving seat especially you're, just, you're not going to be able to see whether your lights are illuminated or not so you either need someone to help you and you'd ask them can you just go and check my brake lights are working and they go and have a look and hopefully all three would be working so on this car we've got a high level brake light and then the two normal ones your car may not have the third brake light the most cars do and as long as they're all working you're all good obviously you don't always have somebody with you so to check your brake lights are working if you've not got anybody with you hopefully you'll be parked somewhere near a window or a reflection in another car so when i'm pressing the brake pedal now i can see my brake lights illuminating in the reflection of a car that's behind me so i know that they're working and that's as equally as good as long as you can see the lights are working then you're in a good position and you know that you're nice and safe so next question question number nine can you tell me how you'd check that your power assisted steering is working correctly so again two ways to check this nice and straightforward again so first one you can do when you are about to start the car put some pressure so for me i'm going to pull down on the wheel a little bit here to the left or actually i'll push up to the right because i need to get to the button to start the car as you then start the car the wheel should go you've got lots of beeps and release and get nice and easy to move that would show that your power steering pumps working and your power steering is going to work correctly the other option and the other thing you can do as well as you then drive away once you know that that's working you can move you can turn the wheel and it should move nice and smoothly and light and evenly there shouldn't be any um, heaviness or notchiness to it okay so the next question that they could ask you would be can you show me how you turn on the rear fog lights in the car now to do this you're very often on fog lights with your car need to have your headlights on and so once you've turned your headlights on so two two clicks forward in this car to go from off to on to dipped headlights you then there's a switch on the inside um, and we need to move this switch back and roll it down to this um, picture here of a of, that indicates the rear fog lights if you roll it forwards you get the front fog lights and then to turn them off you just turn the headlights back off two clicks and the lights will come off and the last question they could ask you in the car the question number 11 would be can you tell me how you would change from dipped headlights to main beam headlights now to do this you would turn your headlights on so two clicks forward and then in this car you push the stick forward away from you now in some cars it's the opposite way around but this car my car here it's a push forward sometimes it's a pull backwards um, these you may need to ask and uh, be shown this by your driving instructor if you have a driving instructor um, or if you're learning with uh, mum and dad you just need to understand what it is in the car that you're going to be taking your test in what it would be in that because you could get asked and you want to know straight away how to do it and then to turn them off you push it forward again or whatever the control was you do the opposite of it to turn it off and then turn your headlights back off the second part of this would be how would you know that those lights are on and again on the dashboard um, you should see this blue light um, a main beam lights so headlights goes green for dipped headlights uh, this indication light and then you've got a blue one for for main beam headlights uh, obviously we don't want to be driving around with main beam headlights on all the time they're very very bright and you could dazzle and distract other drivers um, as you're driving along especially if it's on, obviously at night you don't want to be dazzling people it can make it very difficult to see so that's the end of the questions that you'd be asked inside the car um, that's only 11 so question 12 13 and 14 are all under the bonnet now i will show you this on my car this will be different in every different type of car so again know your own car but i'll show you what it is in this car so these final three questions on the tell me section are under the bonnet so you will need to find and locate your bonnet release so they are generally one of three places so down low on the driver's side on the right i'll show you a picture and that's where it is in this car under the steering column or left hand side in the passenger footwell somewhere so you'll have to find that in your own car but in my car it's down the right hand side as it is in this picture here okay so the first thing you're going to need to do once you've popped the bonnet open on the inside is open it fully on the outside there is a little safety catch you need to move and lift the bonnet up and secure it with the strut to hold the bonnet open so the next things you can see here are i'm pointing at the engine oil dipstick so what you'd use to check the oil then the coolant reservoir for the radiator to keep the car cool 
and then finally the brake fluid reservoir. Okay, so to check your engine oil, first of all, you need to pull out the dipstick all the way out, wipe the stick clean, replace the dipstick back into the tube all the way to the bottom, pull it back out, and you'll see that there's a minimum and a maximum mark. Your oil needs to fall between those two lines. Uh, too little and you risk your engine getting damaged um, through not being lubricated properly and too much. Uh, and equally, it won't be able to move properly, so you could damage your engine as well. So if there's not enough, just top it up a little bit. Secondly, to check your coolant, you have sufficient coolant. Hopefully you can see here on the bottle, there is an F and an L mark. Sometimes it's minimum, maximum, but you want to make sure your car's on nice flat ground. Check that F and L line or minimum, maximum. Make sure the water line again is between those two lines. And finally, the last one to check is checking the brake fluid. So on the side of the bottle here, this is the brake fluid reservoir. You've got a minimum and a maximum mark. As long as the brake fluid falls between those two lines, again, you're good. Okay. Now to move on to the seven show me questions. So remember these questions are gonna be asked of you whilst the car is moving. So they're checking basic control of the car and that you can carry out these, these basic safety uh, related questions, some of them. So keeping your windscreens clear, um, either demisted or um, washed and clean. Um, or doing a common task such as opening your side window. Something you're gonna need to do when you go into Mike's Story Car Park, drive through McDonald's, uh, wherever it might be that you're going. So. First question, show me how you would wash and clean the front windscreen. So quite a simple one this, um, you get hold of this stalk here on the right in this car and you pull the stalk towards you. That will cause the windscreen wipers to wipe and the, and the fluid to come out up on the, onto the windscreen. Similarly, you could get asked to wash the rear windscreen. So in this car, you push the stick away from you and the rear window will get water shot onto it and the rear wiper will go and clear the rear windscreen. So the next thing is demisting the rear windscreen. So in this car, it's nice and straightforward. You've got a picture and a button here that says rear on it, down here in the center console. This picture here of that square picture there, that's pretty universal to mean that's the rear demister. It, that doesn't always say rear on them in every car, but in this car it does. So you'd press that once uh, and the light will illuminate um, like this. I like that and show you that it's demisting and then the examiner will ask you to turn that off again so you'll press the button again and it turns off the next thing you could get asked would be show me how you demist the front windscreen so again in my car you've got to put a little button here that says front on it again that picture there the curved windscreen with the lines on it is for the front windscreen so you press that button in this car you should hear and a lot of cars with air conditioning now you'll hear the fans start to blow here they go so they're making lots of noise uh, that's them blowing air at the windscreen to demist it and then you turn it off when you're asked to do so so the next thing you could get asked would be can you show me how you turn on your dipped headlights as you can see at the minute we have automatic headlights in this car the lights would be off if it's daytime you still need to be able to turn them on you can't just say oh they're on automatic in this car your car might not have automatic headlights so you need to be able to you know how to do it so on this car they're on the indicator stalk some cars there's switches elsewhere by the steering wheel but these are the, 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 the pictures you're looking for to show you lights. First click is side lights. They've asked for dipped headlights, which is two clicks forward. That'll be your dipped headlights. The next one you can get asked is how you operate your horn. So this is nice and easy. Easy to, easy to see, there's the picture. It's got a picture of a horn on it. You press that middle button, you should get the noise. There you go. And that's all done. Important with that one, all these and all these questions, it's always going to be asked when it's safe to do so. So don't do that when you're going past a pedestrian or or a cyclist. You don't want to scare them half to death when you beat the horn. And then finally, you're going to get asked to open your side window. So in this car, you can see here, we've got four switches. These four switches here are for the windows. The one to the front and to the right. So where your seat is in the front right hand side of the car is the window that relates, the button relates to your window. So you'd press it down to open the window and then pull it back up to close the window. All right then guys, that just about wraps it all up for today with Show Me Tell Me. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a lot of detail in that, but none of it's overly complicated. You don't need to be a mechanic to be able to understand any of these Show Me Tell Me questions. It's the stuff that you really, really need to know to be able to make sure you can keep your car safe um, on the road. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this today. I've got a nice, a nice little bit of information for you. Um, help you prepare for your driving test well. Um, you can get a copy of these questions online at gov.uk. I'll leave a, a link to it in the description box. 
Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Um, hit the like button if you have. Um, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get a notification from when I upload any more videos in the future. Yep, stay safe out there and see you again soon.